Hey everyone, and welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're gonna talk about something we all think we have a handle on, our online privacy. But here's the thing, in this age of non-stop tracking, that simple incognito window just doesn't cut it anymore. It's absolutely critical to go beyond that. If you're really serious about protecting your digital life, you gotta know what's actually happening behind the screen. So let's dive right in. Okay, so picture this. You open up a private window, maybe you even fire up your VPN, and you feel like you're totally invisible online, right? A digital ghost. Well, not so fast. The truth is, that whole combo, it barely even scratches the surface of what you need for real anonymity, especially heading into 2025. Look, hiding your IP address with a VPN, that's a great start for sure but it's kind of like changing the license plate on a totally unique custom-painted car. Sure, the plate is different, but the car is still unmistakable. See, websites are collecting so many other signals, things like your user agent, which basically tells them exactly what browser and operating system you're on. And then there's this wild thing called canvas data, which can pinpoint your specific graphics card. All these little tiny details get bundled together to create a digital signature, one that is uniquely 100% you. And that right there, that leads us to the real villain of this whole story. The biggest threat to your anonymity online. We're talking about your browser's fingerprint. So what is browser fingerprinting anyway? It's a method that sounds complex, but it's actually pretty simple and scarily powerful. A website literally just scoops up all those little data points we just talked about, your fonts, your screen size, all of it, and stitches them together. The ID they create is so specific, it can actually be more unique than your real life fingerprint. And that means they can track you all over the web, even if you're a pro at clearing your cookies after every single session. It just doesn't matter. Okay, so why should you care? What are the real stakes here? Well, for starters, your accounts can get linked up and then banned. Yeah, big platforms like Google, Amazon, Facebook, they use this exact technology to enforce their one account per person rules. So, if they spot the same unique fingerprint trying to log into multiple accounts, bam, that can trigger an instant automatic ban, no questions asked, and it gets worse. It also means you could be paying more for stuff online. You know how that happens. E-commerce sites use your fingerprint, combine it with your browsing history and where they think you are to show you different prices, and guess what? They're usually higher prices than what someone else might see. It's a classic trick called price discrimination. And look, the stakes can get even higher than that. Think about journalists, activists, or even business folks doing some quiet competitive research. For them, a leaked fingerprint isn't just an annoyance. It can expose their sensitive work, their sources, or even their real identity. We're talking about putting entire operations and even personal safety on the line. All right, that's the problem. And I know it sounds kind of bleak, doesn't it? But don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. There are absolutely solutions out there. And that brings us to what I like to call the anonymous toolkit, the essential features a browser has to have to actually give you your privacy back. It really boils down to three main pillars for real anonymity. First up, you gotta spoof your fingerprint. Think of it like putting on a digital disguise. So you just blend into the online crowd. Second, you have to isolate your browsing sessions. You build these digital walls between your tabs, so what you're doing on Facebook has no idea what you're doing on Amazon. And third, you've got to integrate your proxies properly, using a different one for each session. This makes it look like you're a totally different person in a completely different place every single time you start a new task. So, okay, that's the theory. How does this all play out with the actual browsers you can download today? Well, there's really no one-size-fits-all answer here. Different browsers are built for totally different jobs, from just some casual privacy all the way up to professional-grade serious identity management. And here's a quick tour of how that landscape looks. On one end, you've got the heavyweights, the power user anti-detect browsers like Multi-Login or Go-Login. These give pro marketers, you know, ad agencies, insane control over every little fingerprint detail. But man, they can have a steep learning curve. Then you've got cloud-native options like Sendwin. These are awesome for teams because nothing is stored on your local machine making collaboration a breeze. For most of us though, mainstream privacy browsers like Brave hit that sweet spot, a great mix of speed and security for just your everyday browsing. 
And finally, for people who need the absolute highest level of protection, we're talking activists and journalists, the open source Tor browser is the undisputed gold standard, even if it's a little on the slow side. All right, so with all these choices on the table, how in the world do you pick your digital shield? It really just comes down to one thing, finding the right tool for your specific needs. So let's just ask it straight up. How do you choose the right browser? The answer isn't the same for everyone. It completely depends on your threat model, basically who you're trying to hide from, and what you're actually trying to do online. So let's break it down. Here's a simple way to match the tool to what you need. If you need ultimate privacy and want to get around censorship, maybe you're a journalist, then you go with the Tor browser. No question. If you're looking for better everyday privacy that won't slow your computer to a crawl, Brave is a fantastic choice. Now, if your job is all about managing multiple online accounts, say for e-commerce or running ads, you need a professional tool like SendWin, Multilogin, or GoLogin to keep from getting your accounts banned. And for teams and agencies where you need to collaborate, check out browsers like OctoBrowser or AdsPower. Finally, if you just need something lightweight to juggle a few different online identities, Ghost Browser is a really solid, simple option. So let's wrap this up with the most critical takeaway here. The game has completely changed. The old playbook, you know, just firing up an incognito window and a basic VPN, it just doesn't work anymore. It can't defend you against today's advanced tracking and those tricky account linking algorithms. You really do need a dedicated tool for the job now. And that leaves us with just one last thing to think about. In a world that is, let's face it, always watching, always tracking, always building a profile on you, what's the real value of being invisible? Whether your answer is security, freedom, or just simple peace of mind, that's a question I think is really worth pondering. Thanks for joining me on The Explainer.